Welcome to today's broadcast of the N Generation Project Podcast, showcasing daily excellence with this episode titled Urgent Holy Land at Breaking Point. We broadcast podcast episode number 48. Join us as we read into the latest global insights with Pastor Paul Begley and Michael from the Council of Time. For deeper insights, visit the official Council of Time website linked in description. Join our mission of disseminating God's word and also carry a message of recovery for our people still suffering with addiction. Your support drives our mission and unlocks the transformative potential of living a meaningful life of truth and sobriety and prepare for what the Bible calls perilous times. Be prepared. If you enjoy these videos, we have a brand new local community and also with lots more information on that. In short, we get to run a full-time channel with the help of our beloved subscribers. See the link in the description. But now, before we get into today's rebroadcast podcast, titled Virgin Holy Land at Breaking Point, Episode 48, we wish you a heartfelt thank you for your unwavering support. As we journey together, we're committed to maintaining this podcast ad-free. Your backing enables us to share God's word far and wide. Remember to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in your life. Just those simple acts help get the message out and across the world where we have our podcast translated into over a dozen languages. And now, it's time for today's episode number 48, Virgin Holy Land at Breaking Point. Now, let's get into In Generation Project Rebroadcast Podcast number 48 with Pastor Paul Begley and Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Mike from around the world. How you doing, Mike? Pastor Paul Begley, I'm doing pretty good tonight. How about you, sir? I'm doing good. So glad you called. So glad you're with us tonight. Um, good to be here. Yes, yes. Well, Mike, we got Gorilla Hail. Have you ever heard of Gorilla Hail, Mike? It's falling right, yeah. in, right now in Kansas and Missouri. And there's seven states right now that have tornado warnings. Yeah. Yeah, a little bigger than a uh, golf ball. So is this pretty because... Big, pretty compact. Well, you told us that, you know, look, when the atmospheric compression keeps pushing down, that the winds are going to get a lot stronger, and that's going to create bigger hail. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's happening on uh, Mars, too. On Mars? Yeah, we, in fact, I've been doing some uh, relational studies with Earth, Mars, and some of the other uh, planets. All of them are going through atmospheric uh, changes. Is it because, is it planet, I mean, okay, is the binary system affecting the whole, at, the whole? It has to be, it has yeah. to be, it has to be, because you're, you're having these, uh, these relational changes between Earth, Mars, and, and some of the other planets all at the same time, right? Yep. That's, uh, you know, if it's affecting all of them, it's coming from an external source, and the sun is one of the main mechanisms of that. So what we see is a buildup of uh, some pretty disastrous effects. Speaking of that, uh, we're getting reports that jet pilots are saying that you know, I think these these big commercial planes can go. I've been on them when there's, they're going 500, 550 miles an hour, you know, especially overseas. They're saying, though, now that they're going as much as 800 miles an hour, that, the, that there's such a tailwind when they're up there high enough. It's like they've never seen before. Have you heard the reports of this? Yes. And there are, um, in the jet stream, especially in upper altitudes, uh, in that, that wind... What happens is if you have that potential of wind, it's always been there, but we've not had the density we have now, right? So air causes friction, and the more the heavier the air gets, right, the more of a force it has when it pushes, and that's what's happening. The upper atmospheres are becoming quite dense, which means our air traffic is about to change totally. It's going to totally change. And, and, and because... It's going to become too dangerous, isn't it, for planes up yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, at higher altitudes with high density, um, you have that high density layer. It's going to become not only hot, right? You're, you're talking about because when you get up 45, uh, 45,000 feet or something like that, it's very cold up there. Imagine at 45,000 feet, the temperature being about 120 degrees, right? The 
that comes from uh, when the when the density of the upper atmospheres as it continues to increase is going to have a heat transfer from the ionosphere directly to the uh, some of the lower you know um, atmospheres that's going to cause extreme heat from the top down wow so it's cold up there but it's going to create extreme heat down here on earth right it's cold now because we have no there's there's very low density as time continues as more particulates get captured in the upper atmosphere right yep heat can transfer from one particle to another that's going to raise the temperature right now in the ionosphere right if you went out there you'd freeze but the actual temperature is about four thousand degrees it's about four thousand so when we have more molecules right in the upper atmospheres um and all those um, everything out there is going to begin to heat up so we're going to have heat coming from the upper atmospheres which is going to cause a terrible effect down here on the earth all those uh conditions that we see in the word of god they're going to happen i believe plus some they're going to be bad really bad we've never had that before um mike while this is happening now you know we obviously tornadoes but we got like six feet of snow is predicted to fall in denver or maybe it already has uh, well, they have 22 hours left uh, the next 22 hours they could drop another foot or a foot and a half of snow in colorado that is absolutely crazy yeah of course we know what happened just a couple weeks ago with sierra mountains over in california and nevada and and there's also and i, I to the life of me we uh, uh, I cannot remember where, but a whole lake, the wind blew so hard that the whole lake just moved two miles. I mean, it, it dried up and it formed a new lake two miles away. Um, how do you... It was an updraft that kind of, you know, kind of picked it up. How can and that happen? It. I mean, can it do well, that? Well, yeah, because let's look at hail for a minute. Hail forms. When you have ground winds in, in excess of about, say, about 60 miles an hour, right? And, and then you have these updrafts, hot air going straight up. As that speed increases, it holds water a lot in the upper atmospheres, which freezes and kind of tumbles. And then the weight of the hail, as it gets large, it overwhelms the updraft and then falls to the earth. Well, that same updraft can pick water up off the ground right have it get trapped or caught or tossed into the air and it can go as much as 16 miles <laughs> it can go as much as 20 miles whoa uh okay so so when the the bible says there was a strong east wind that parted the yep. red sea it literally yep. can do that yep absolutely absolutely now that brings up this uh, a problem when the jet streams reverse right on the east coast that ocean water is going to go right up in the air number one the wind speeds are too high right so when it does reverse it's going to pick up the eastern coast and it's going to throw it aloft to inland it's going to throw all that water inland on the east coast on the entire east coast that's going to swamp so them. that's going to be a problem yeah that's going to be a problem, yeah, because the East Coast cannot support that type of weight, that water weight. It cannot do that. Um, that's going to be a big issue. California, the same thing can happen to California in a couple months. The, the, if the air continues, if the patterns continue, it can actually take ocean water and throw it inland, right? Um, the Gulf region is the same, same thing. It can pick up the, the waters in the Gulf and toss those waters, of course, hate to tell everybody this, waters in the Gulf are turning to poison. What? So that's not good. Yeah, they're slowly turning to poison. Well, it's due to excessive heat, right? Uh, it's due to volcanism, and it's due to the ice melts and the current flows. And what's happening is in these little shallow areas, um, near Florida, near the coastlines, you know, going around to Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, parts of Texas, you have microbes uh, that have been once frozen in the ice, and the currents are dragging those microbes down right around Florida into the Gulf. It's causing an effect. It's starting to affect the brains 
of uh, sea life, right? Not only is it happening uh, in Florida and the Gulf, but it's also happening in parts of the West Coast where you have shallow waters, parts of Alaska. It's also happening in, if you go all the way to Africa, same thing is happening. Uh, so those, those, that, that Gulf Stream, uh, the North Atlantic Drift, where it normally goes from south to north, has reversed. It's going the opposite direction, bringing cold water uh, down through the Gulf Stream, the opposite direction around the Keys into the Gulf. And, and you know, it circulates and goes back out. So we have some events here on this earth that are going to give scientists a headache. It's just throwing all the norms. Are the, the keys window. going to be affected by this type of phenomenon? The, now? the keys, are they going to get affected too down there? Yeah, they're being affected now. The sea life in the keys is being affected now. Um, folks, we've got Mike around the world with us here tonight. And Mike, I want to ask you another question because we've had, there's a question that actually I saw this on the news that dead satellites are falling to the earth now in numbers like we're not used to. They say, and you would probably know, they say there's about a half a million satellites orbiting the Earth right now. Some are active, some are not, and they anticipate we could be up to a million satellites circling the Earth by 2030. The question they're asking, is reporting is, that when these satellites keep falling to the Earth, could they weaken our magnetic field? Do they sure affect they it? Sure they can. They're, they're in such volume. Um, that they do cause a difference in those magnetic field lines of force, right? By themselves, those magnetic field lines are extremely weak and vulnerable. Collectively, they're extremely strong, right? When these satellites are going in between it, uh, disrupting current flow and everything else, they cause a bubble around themselves, which will actually cause those magnetic field lines to flex. They'll, they'll go in different directions. As these satellites lose power, the magnetosphere has to reorientate itself, right? Those magnetic field lines of force reorientate. Well, those lines of force are an actual highway to radiation. So as we have solar winds that hit the Earth, and that highway, those magnetic field lines carry it harmlessly into the Earth. If they get disrupted, um, those highways are going to get all messed up, and that radiation is going to go all over the place. That's when people are going to start to see auroras, right? That's the telltale sign. When people in the evening are looking at the beautiful clouds and they're all different colors, you know, and all this, people are taking pictures. That's going to be an actual warning, uh, a big warning that we're in, we're in uh, some pretty deep water, right? Bad shape. That means our, the magnetosphere has been totally upset, right? And of course, if it gets upset, so will the human brain. So will animal brains. So will the navigation within both, um, you know, aquatic life and, and uh, birds and all sorts of things. That magnetite is not going to interact the right way. So their navigation is going to be off. That causes a severe irritation and high aggression. Right? So you're going to have animal attacks like never before. Um, that's already happening in, in sporadic places. But these satellites, we've reached a, a, a period where they, they're, they're finding themselves having to knock down more than what they thought they would have to knock down. And again, some of these satellites carry some pretty potent stuff, right? One satellite, a 12 by 12 satellite, has enough material that if it were to explode in the atmosphere, it would kill everybody on the planet. No! No, 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 So, so my, they carry my, some pretty my, nasty... No, 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 right? no. You're, you're telling me a, a satellite 12 by 12, if it explodes, could kill everybody on the planet? That's right. Is they it have certain satellites up there because of the fuel source, right? A long time ago, they were using all types of uh, uh, radioactive reactions to, to fuel things, right? They sent them right out in the space. Um, so Are you serious? Looking at depleted matter, you know, worse than uranium. Worse than, think about if there were a substance like liquid uranium. Or something to that effect, with with acid, you know, an acid-based compound that would, uh, you know, have some sort of aerial burst and dissipate in the clouds, and then, you know, that's going to fall to Earth. That would destroy everybody. That stuff can poison people big time, kill everybody. I mean, uh, okay, so I mean, we know this. I mean, it's up there. Yeah. That's why we have 
as my Space Command, Air Force Command, and, and the Navy, they're always occupied, right, with shooting these things and incinerating uh, some of these. Uh, I see. Every day, they're killing something. Every day, they're incinerating something so, in space. Every single day. So they have to incinerate them so that there's yeah. nothing that can fall into our atmosphere and create That's this right. chain reaction, this explosive chain reaction. That's that, right. Unbelievable. This, yeah, it is. You know, I think people can find that there. Some of these satellites have a fuel box that's about six inches by four inches, and within that box is a substance that, if it were released in the atmosphere, right, it would poison or kill everybody on the planet. Unbelievable. I mean, see, nobody knows about this stuff. I mean, are you serious? Am I going to sleep better at yeah. night uh, knowing this now? I doubt well, it. Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> what, you know what, Paul, always tell people that, uh, you know, we should have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. But it's only God's grace and mercy that we live. When people, people, I guess they don't thank God enough because they don't understand what they've been protected from. They don't, they don't comprehend it. And that's only the tip of the iceberg, you know. Wow. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So let, let, uh, let me go into another area here. Let's talk about some stuff happening here on Earth. I, I want to talk about Israel in a minute and what Chuck Schumer said and, and what this means. But before I do, Haiti, I mean, it's, it's, it's become Hades instead of Haiti. And this, this guerrilla uh, gangster, this guy calls himself the barbecue. Um, and my, here's my question. We, we sent our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, he was in Kenya trying to, talking to the Kenyans about sending their army to bring law and order back to Haiti and to help them and help put in a new puppet government, I guess, or a new puppet president for America. I, I don't know. What is going on? I mean, and there's hundreds of Americans that are stuck there pleading with the State Department, pleading, calling the White House, begging for somebody to send help. And the word we got from the Pentagon, from Jake, Jake Sullivan, was they're on their own. They, they, they're on their own. They shouldn't have been there in the first place. I mean, what kind of a government just says, too bad? What are we doing, well, Mike? The one we have says that. Um, it is one of those uh, one of those things, and they like us. Like I said last week, they have totally. It's like they they have washed their hands of that place, right? And uh, it, it's uh, it's lost. It's fallen. It's in a fallen state. Uh, so the people that are there, well, you have to look at the type people that are there, right? I hate to bring this up, but you know sometimes that plays in that decision. If they, if they're not. Uh, if there are certain types of folks that uh, I guess people don't really, you know, place their value or stock in. And they don't care what happens to them, unfortunately. So, yeah, you do have Americans there. You do have other teams there. And it's a very uh, volatile place. Uh, at the beginning of this thing, they tried several extractions. And believe me, these guys fighting guerrilla wars is very, it's like Mogadishu all over yeah. and times, you know, times 700. And uh, these guys are walking around chewing coca leaves and everything else. Um, it, it's just bad. How do you find somebody if you shoot their arm off and they continue to shoot you and not respond to their arm? You know, they just fell off in the ground because they're so high on cocaine. So that's what, that's what you face over there. It is, uh, it's a, it's a sad story. Unfortunately, we do have an administration that is, uh, you know, in an election year, and it's almost like they're not awake or something. They, they, they're not uh, sober, I would say. And, uh, you know, their care factor, it's in the wrong place right now. It really is. Well, we know how people get around election time. They forego everything for the sake of themselves, and, and terrible things start happening. In this case... You know, we have a president who uh, is not making decisions. And his cabinet, all of the, those guys, I don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing either. But people will die in this. And that's not the only place. Haiti is not the only one on the uh, X margins list, countries to fall. There are a few countries that they're going to, you know, kind of sanitize. Now, I would say more that this is a sanit that, that Haiti has been sanitized. That's what I would say. This is not by accident. You can't tell me no, no. monitors the activity of these guerrilla fighters. 
and they didn't know the uh, language and the rhetoric that was being used. They knew this was coming, right? We have ships on the coastline, medical ships, right? Right now. So you mean nobody can go in there and get anybody? I, I'm not. Nobody I, should buy that. No, I mean we're refusing. We're this refusing. Global change, Pastor. Paul. Okay. And it's uh, you know they're going to get rid of every bad neighborhood, every bad neighborhood. They're going to get rid of every bad neighborhood. So this is global change. This is a new world order. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. humans don't matter. Humans don't count. People, we, we should have known this when we've killed 60, uh, 62 million unborn children in our own country. That's right. So people don't mean nothing to anybody. Euthanasia is the biggest thing going now in Canada. And it's starting to spread into the Northwest and, and other parts of America. It's going to become the norm. I even think, and I really believe this, that we're going to soon get an expiration date given to us by the federal government. Maybe it's 80, maybe it's 85, but they're going to give us a date that says, look, this is it. You can only go this far. We, it's, you got to go. You got to go for the better, for the greater good. I know that sounds like George or Orwellian type, but I'm being brutally honest. There is no mercy left here, is there? No, it's funny you would say that, too, because uh, presidents are given a set of mandates when they take office. Population control is in that list. Okay. Right? And what that means is right now there is an expiration date on people. It's through big pharma. It's through manufacturing plants, right? So every chemical they use is purposed. Everything they package is purposed. Believe me, it's well planned. B, it's well thought out. Like you have scientists. You have grade A scientists in charge of setting up these manufacturing and processing plants. Why would they bring in the best scientific minds to orchestrate what chemicals are going to be used and everything else? And it just so happens the same families that run Big Pharma are the same families in charge of all this prepackaged stuff. So you have all these guys who essentially, that's why they're so good with their statistics concerning the death rate. Right? They can yeah. estimate the death rate. Why? Because they're controlling who's living and who's dying. Medical care right now, only specific people can get medical care. They already know there's a certain populace that does not live past a certain age. And this goes, this goes on and on and on. So they're doing it. They're doing it. If they want to pull the plug right now, they can do it so easily, so easily, because people are too dependent externally of themselves. It's not like we, everybody knows how to hunt. Everybody, we can't gather food, not with the numbers that we have down. We can't do that. It's no, too many people, too many people now, yeah. We, we are, we're kind of stuck. And they're managing everything like that, but now they're starting to sanitize large areas of the earth. That's gonna become quite prevailing uh, over a short period of time. And uh, they really don't care if people find that out or not. They're gonna continue doing what they do. So you eugenics- know, Backlash gets too high, then we have a war. We're gonna have a war that will make up for all that noise and get rid of dissidents and that, you know, in that area so 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 eugenics you eugenics is no longer a concept it's a it's happening okay. yeah. it's here we're doing it yeah. Yeah. you know i had uh, when after i had a stroke and i had this i uh, went to this uh clinic and i had uh, 60 treatments done to help um grow stem cells in my brain to try to get to try to get uh, the healing of areas that was damaged. Uh, it's a very uh, cutting edge. It's the only one in the world. They've now just built a second one in Dubai, but uh, the, the first one in the world was here in Florida. And they did a complete workup on me, as you can imagine. But one of the things they did was they did a complete DNA and they sent me back a report. And it's probably about 125 pages of my DNA. It came from Italy. And when they were done, and uh, I was only the 67th person that ever went through this treatment. It was the first person that the actual DNA report came back on, which is kind of wild. But they said to me, Paul, now that we've studied your DNA from every possible way it can be done, we know how long you're going to live. Yeah. Within, we, we, we can predict it within four months. Yeah. I, I didn't ask what that was because I'm like, um, that's your, that's, 
that's what you can do. I mean, I, God can do greater than that. But that does make me, is, is this true, Mike? What they told me, is that, that's the fact? Yeah, by your DNA, because they know all the triggers, switches, if you will, in your DNA. Your DNA is essentially uh, a set of instructions, right? It will let a scientist know when cells are going to turn off, what diseases are going to prevail in your system, right? How big a response is going to be for any given situation. And so effectively, it wants to calculate everything they know when your cells are going to terminate, Right. This is this is yeah. their calculations because I've been given that, you know, you got six months to live thing a few times and I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. But, you know, uh, God's greater. Than, man man yes, can do so much, but God is greater. Right. Is. right. I have a saying. Doctors can tell me what to pray for. There you go. I like but that. They can't give me, you know, they can't tell me when I'm leaving. No. Plus, that would make me too happy. Are you kidding? I'm <laughs> leaving. I don't know where I'm going. Anyway, uh, back to the other question. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Your DNA yep. foretells everything it's going to do. They know how to read the instructions. And they can also induce triggers in your DNA, right? Listen, mm -hmm. Because if they know how to read the instructions of your DNA, right? Then you also know through the, the myriad of genome projects, they know how to trigger every single switch in your DNA. They know how to extend somebody's life a hundred years. They already know how to do that. They, they know how to stop cell degeneration. They know how to make a person grow new teeth. They know how to do this. What? They can give a person, they can give a person a teaspoon Right? Full of a, uh, uh, it's almost like a type of hormone. And you will grow a brand new set of teeth. But they reserve all this stuff for other folks, certainly not us. So they know the, how the trigger works of immortality. It'll make you angry, too, because you see a lot of people suffering. And yeah. They will not. They will not. They're not helping anybody. And the poor doctors, you know, they're God fearing doctors out right, there. But right. If they blow their hands muscle, are tied. They're going to be removed and they can't help anybody else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Their hands are tied and, and they, they do the best they can with what they're allowed right. to work with. I understand. It's it's uh, it's heartbreaking. OK, so uh, Kate Middleton has come up missing. I, I want to get to Israel here, but I'm just just before I go there. People are concerned. Kate Middleton has just basically not been seen. They altered the pictures, and now, no, no, no she has not been seen in public. Is what I'm trying to say, Heidi. They know where she's right. at. Right. So I had uh, we had some folks that sent us an email asking about that. So what what is your what's your thoughts on that? Well, in one aspect, uh, you know, everybody went through this before with other folks, right? And they have, you know, these, they have their ways of doing things. As far as those pictures, I'll explain it as best I can. Okay. Um, suppose you took a family photo, but you get sick. And you don't want to look a certain way in your family photo, right? So you edit your own picture, right? But they kind of blew that up because they know that she edited those pictures. That right. All the edit telltale marks came from the same, it's got the same metadata as the machine that was processed on, which means she took a photo, stuck it in a Photoshop or something like that, and changed a couple things. But still, they had to pull it. And then, you know, of course, other ones come out, which means she's not in good shape. If she does not want to be seen, she's not in good shape, right? So then the outcome is, is uh, could be inevitable. The outcome could be just like, you know, uh, those that came before her. When you're dealing with that family, and not to be disrespectful or throw anybody under the bus, but they are rooted in very ancient principles, right? They also run the church. Yes, they do. do you know that? Yeah, okay, they're the head so of the church, right? They're, they're not, you look, these folks, uh, they see themselves as almost demigods, okay? And they really take on that responsibility, which means when you have that type mentality, when you have a vessel, because they think of women as vessels, right? Unless they have that blood lineage. If you're just a vessel and something happens, they'll probably, you know, possibly save the children. But if anything pops up like a scandal or something like that, you know they're going to get rid of the person, right? They have to be, they have to do everything in the interests of the kingdom, right? That is, that is the home of the red dragon. 
I mean, for the sons, people bowed down to them and pledged their lives to them. Yes, I know that. Their yeah. rings in the bottom of the rooms, right? Uh, they have these little weird ceremonies and things of that nature, which is you know in their heritage. But still, if they can do that and they can accept that, then they can be cold-hearted enough. How to not value human life like we do. And when you're in leadership, say about this, people in leadership, they know people starve to death. They know people are dying. And they can still smile at each other and go drink drinks and act like it doesn't happen. And they have a full report on the on the the murders, the crime, the starvation, right? The the inequality and all that. And they can sleep comfortably at night knowing all that. So how loving are these people in the first place? If you can sleep comfortably and you know the details of suffering and it does not bother you, your conscience is seared. I mean, it's seared. Yeah. Well, that, that takes me to Chuck E. Schumer then. Um, okay. I understand he's the highest ranking elected Jew in the history of America. And he let us all know that today stood up on the floor of the Senate for 30 minutes declaring that Netanyahu's got to go, period. Either either you guys need to do an election right now or he's got to go. One way or the other. And, then, and then right after he gave this speech, which he blamed Netanyahu for everything going wrong in Israel, uh, a former IDF commander spoke and said, we got to take this country back. Go ahead, everybody, pour into the streets. Let's overthrow this government. I mean, and then Schumer goes on to say, if we maybe we need to take a look at the the money, uh, the the arms we're sending. I guess they release a certain amount of ammunition or arms or whatever every 36 hours. It's exactly what you said. I heard it myself disarming Israel. This is not just the UN saying we need to do something. This was the United States of America talking about disarming its yeah. number one ally in the world. Yep, yeah, they're, they're, um, yeah, they're actually, Schumer is, he's always had a type of complex. In other words, if he approves something, right? Yeah. Have you noticed it normally is approved? Yeah. And if he goes against something, it normally is gone against. And he is a powerful force in the Middle East, and he has a lot of followers in Israel. So this fight with Hamas has caused a humanitarian crisis in the minds of those who may not know the significance of Israel, right, of, of those land masses. They're disconnected from biblical things regarding Israel. In fact, the whole world has turned against Israel. Yeah, they have. And and what was it, a couple months ago, we spoke about Bibi Netanyahu. He was in danger. Yeah. And he's really in danger. And so um, they want him out. They want him out, right? Yep. So they can monitor Israel's growth and activity and everything else, and they're going to force a two-state solution. Yes. Regardless of what anybody thinks, they're going to have that. Yep. Right? They're going to they're going to do it, and it's going to be in a way that will disgust most. It, it really is an unfortunate, sad thing. I mean, the Bible says it's going to happen, but when you see it taking place and taking shape, it is uh, one of those you know it's one of those horrendous it's, things. It's sad. It, it, we we know it's we read the scriptures. Yeah. You and I have discussed it several times. I've got I've got other colleagues, I guess, or peers of mine who don't believe it will happen, but they don't understand. They haven't read the scriptures fully. You have the 42 months where the Gentiles are going to trample, uh, Israel's going to be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. You have to have a change for that to happen. Is America has to go through a transformation and a weakening for that to happen. So we're getting ready to see the forced two-state solution. It looks like... There could be a, a major assassination right now. It wouldn't shock me at all. Uh, I'm talking about in Israel. Uh, He's in trouble. There's in big and trouble. Every, every single American, they better watch this situation closely. Pastor I'm telling you, they better watch it closely. Because whatever happens in Benjamin Netanyahu's case, I'm telling you right now, they better watch it closely. If they think there's, a, there's, there's some naivete in the U.S. concerning what can and cannot happen. 
people have not uh, been exposed to the earlier days when when uh, nations were being settled. But right now we face a situation where if if Israel continues on their current track, we're going to have some sort of a nuclear exchange. That's oh. guaranteed, right? And even China is speaking up on that. China is speaking. So when you when it gets that close to a, a real rip in the world itself, right? Somebody's going to do something. And so Chuck Schumer, not, he may seem senile and everything else, but this no. guy carries a lot of weight and power, right? Even President Biden backed off yep. when he made that comment. Yep. Because but Biden knows who Chuck Schumer is connected with. Yep. Biden knows, and I'm telling you, it, it's, it's almost like the world right now is actually seeing an extremely dark kingdom rising, gaining power, forcing its will upon people in Israel, is the number one target. Yep. They are the number one. It's the only place in the earth God set aside for himself and his people. It's the only place, and so Satan hates it. <laughs> and so everybody's going against Israel, right, with, a, with an unnatural hatred. Anything that's done in Israel is going to be offensive to everybody else, and switching governments is not going to change that. Right now in Israel, there are a lot of members of the IDF that are joining forces with the voices that say we have to overturn the government. <clears throat> Pastor, it's, it's, there's a buildup in Israel right now, and there could be um, you know, a global event that just breaks loose at any given moment in Israel, right? Yeah. And it will, it, it's going to offset, well, it's going to wake a lot of people up. It's going to disgust many others. It's also going to cause a ripple with those who are not grounded in their faith because they're not going to understand how that happened, right? And, yeah. And, and them being the apple of God's eye, and like we said before, a lot of people don't, they haven't read that part of scripture. No. They have not connected, they keep skipping over it. They have not connected with that. And but it is of a necessity, uh, according to prophecy. But it's distasteful. It's, it's very distasteful. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's extremely distasteful. Nobody yeah. wants to see that. I mean, anyone that uh, that loves the Lord and loves the Holy Land and understands the re the ramification of Jesus coming there and the footsteps and bringing redemption for humanity and the nation of Israel being rebirthed after World War II, the miracle that that was in 1948 and, and up until this moment. But at the same time, Joel told us in chapter three that God will bring the whole world down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat and he will plead with the world, don't do this, don't do this. This is my, my heritage, this is my people, don't do this. But Jesus knew it was coming and he said to folks, those of you living in Judea, you need to flee. You're going to have to flee. It's the coming. Only time Jesus said run. He right? said run. It's the only time the only he says time. run. Yeah. So it's coming. Uh, we yeah, don't we don't like it, it but we need to prepare people for it because when it happens, it's going to shock a lot of Christians, and it's going to shock. Unfortunate part, Pastor Paul. Do you think it's going to? Are going to be shaken by that. Yeah, don't you think that's going to shake their faith and they're going to start wondering, wow, Absolutely. Is, is God Absolutely. even there? Is Where is God? God's there. Absolutely. They just didn't read their Bible or they didn't listen to Absolutely. the prophetic voices and understand. So you think, do you feel that, I mean, this is 2024, Mike. We got an, we got an eclipse coming. We've got signs in the heavens everywhere. We're in the most chaotic election process situation ever. We have Israel on the brink. We have Russia in Ukraine. We got... Poland and everybody is getting on the on the edge of their seat. The NATO nations are afraid they're going to get attacked. We got Haiti fall, to becoming Hades, and and, uh, and and we don't know where it goes from there. We got world out of control tornadoes tearing through, snow blizzards off biblical proportion. We got volcanoes erupting in the ocean. We got the sky falling or or atmospheric compression. I mean, what I mean, what are you, Mike? What is your prediction? How do we get through twenty twenty four? Well, I tell you what, with Israel, this is why Israel is more than a key. It is what, it's a clock, a gauge. If they're traveled underfoot according to prophecy, and they will be, America has to be neutralized. Right now, Pastor Paul, right now, Putin has been making uh, threats that if anybody goes against his nation, 
is going to strike, right? Yep. Well, about eight days ago, traffic, flash traffic was um, everywhere. And there are active hunts going on right now off the East Coast, off the coast of uh, certain parts of Cuba right now for submarines. Um, Russian? Yes, armed, armed submarines. And, and But they're actively hunting, right? You, you f- Seldom do you actually have an aerial hunt of a submarine where you have 24-hour emergency operations to identify uh, to get the placement of a shadow Russian shadow sub that normally does not happen because we have a lot of equipment in the ocean that can pick it up but uh, things have changed things are a bit more serious once they picked up the armaments of the submarines Putin had uh, I believe last month and they tried by policy to stop the dispatch of those subs they couldn't do it and so a few of them went out with uh, their armaments, right? They can't find them. They can't find them. And they're looking off the coast of the East Coast right now, actively looking. Missing, where they are. Miss, did you say missing nuclear missing, subs? Missing, 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 yeah. In other words, they have no accountability of them. They don't even have the uh, normal echoes, you know, when you're hunting shadows, Russian shadows like that. So we're in a very different situation. And then, Putin continues to come out. This is almost every other day. He's coming out saying, if you threaten us, if we perceive a threat, right, we're going to act. And and so here's here's an overall situation. We're, we're in this election year. And this election year is so significant because the Middle East right now is uh, very tense. They're tense because they don't know what the outcome of this election is. If, if Biden wins... Right? Israel has no choice <laughs> but to throw everything they have at Hamas because they know that Biden will ultimately stop it. Right? All the other nations know this too, and they're preparing to counter Israel to help Hamas. Yeah. If Trump wins, he's going to declare Israel their sovereignty and Jerusalem's sovereignty yet again. Yep. And the entire, the entire Middle East is going to be upset. Therefore, if they perceive that Trump is winning, they're going to have to act on Israel sooner than they ever thought before. Iran is preparing everything they have right now for that. This is why we see fight escalations in the Middle East, and, and it's, it's dragging its way right over to the USA. Um, the USA's military is going to be more active in the next few weeks than they have ever been at any time in history, right? Uh All three-letter agencies are warning both their peers and the public of what's happening right now. So so it's a very serious situation, uh, very serious domestic issues that we face here. This is in addition to everything else. But it seems to be if the outcome in a couple of weeks is not favorable to one of the other sides, uh, there's planned activity that will take place on a large scale. This is within the USA. So we have to get ready for that. Then we have Germany's government has a very bad issue right now with their with their populace, right? And so does France. The Islamic influx of individuals that went in both those places has reached a point of no return, which means critical mass. They could easily uh, they could easily be toppled and, and due to the hatred and a lot of the rhetoric that normally, you know, is used around election year is causing Middle Eastern folks and folks who are connected to that heritage to rise up against their respective nations or whatever nation they're in. This is a real problem. Radio chatter, for example, cell phone usage amongst uh, folks of that uh, uh, origin is up at an all-time high, right? Now, they can't say this because Verizon and AT&T and all these places will never go on record saying, yeah, we just, you know, told everybody who's talking the most. They can't do that, right? So even our government has to snoop on them to see who's talking the most or who. But the chatter is at an all-time high in this country, right? It is. So let's talk about this. Germany and in France. France has hit critical mass with the Islamic influence. Germany is in the same boat. I think Belgium is pretty well in the same boat. The United States is getting close to that, aren't we? With the, with the southern border, I mean, not just 
Islamic influence, but the Chinese influence. And, and should be told. Should okay. be told, Pastor. The, the border issue, it is it's an issue, right? But we have a worse problem in the USA. Okay. We have folks that have been here for a few generations, right? Or the great melting pot. Now, keep in mind, look, so we're not going to talk about any illegals right now. We're going to talk about people that are here. Here's what's happening. Okay. You have a lot of people that have been here. Their parents have been here and everything else, but they're not, they're not, uh, they're, they're not originally from this country, right? What's happening is due to this Israeli Hamas issue, it has caused people to come loyal to their own heritage. So you have a lot of sympathetic voices for the Islamic folks in the Middle East and Hamas against Israel from folks who were born here, from parents of whom their parents' parents' parents were born here, right? So think of Americans turning, right? They're turning against their own country and having their loyalty be to their country of origin. We've seen right? it. We see it every day. This is and, what's happening. Yeah. We're talking about hundreds of millions of people. And we're not just talking about folks who are talking about it. Nope. These are folks who are acting. What, what I'm telling you is that these folks are the ones who are preparing. We're talking about hundreds of millions of people, right? Um, they're, they've been here. They're already in position. Now, this southern border issue is just going to exacerbate that whole issue because a lot of Chinese individuals are coming through through that border. They are. And if we're dumb enough to keep the keep the uh, you know that open that that way, because they're trying to turn this into a kindness act. Well, guess what? You don't leave your front door open when you send your family to go to sleep because you know bad people are in the world, right? So you got to shut your front door and lock it. That's irresponsible. It's also unfair to tell a person they can come to the USA knowing they're going to face this issue. Yeah. How stupid is that? Yeah, that's so not that, good either. You know, that's, that's the USA killing, having people give up everything to come here only to be turned away. How yeah, stupid is that? that's bad. So, uh, because Biden, I did, Biden will not say, don't come here. He won't say that. No, he won't. And because he won't say that, they keep, you know, the border is an issue and, and all the other stuff is too. So anyway, but there are certain people in position and the FBI has a headache, and so does uh, so do so does uh, DHS. They have a real headache. DHS does because we have our power plants under threat right now, right? Right now, really? Under threat. Okay, okay. Yes, right now. So they don't know who is who, right? They're actively hunting, is what I'm telling you. Which is why you have these directors coming out saying, "You better armor up." They're telling the American people and those who are listening to them. They're telling them that the greatest spiritual war that has ever been is about to take place they're, they're trying their best to tell people you better make sure you're ready and your family is ready that's what they're this is what the three letter agencies are saying yeah the directors are saying right because right now it's not it's not a political issue this is a life or death issue yeah this is a real life or death issue and it's actually happening in this nation right now as we speak yeah, the bad policies and the and the deliberate um, subverting of our authority, of our of our nation's sovereignty, of its borders, of its law and order, the lawlessness. There was deliberately put in motion by a very by a select few, yeah. but now it's put the entire populace at risk. Uh, at risk of survival for their own families and individuals, their own communities, their own states, their own counties, whatever. Um, and and so now we're, we're coming to a breaking point. We're coming to a head. There's no turning back at this point. I mean, so Jesus said this is the kind of thing would happen. He said, look, because iniquity is going to abound, the love of many is going to wax cold. I mean, he gave us all kinds of clues about wars and rumors of wars and, and all these different, uh, you know, five people be living in one house, two against three and three against two. You know, he told us that there'd be this division and that a house yeah. divided can't stand. And then we yeah. were given all these clues and we were given all this uh, in, uh, uh, direction. But he also told us you better take care of yourself if you. The good man of the house had known what hour the thief was coming. He, he wouldn't have suffered his house to be broken up. In other words, he'd been ready. He's, so we did get some warnings both ways. I guess we have to pray 
we got to be getting closer to the coming of the Lord. What do you think now? we got this webinar come up in eight days. And I haven't interviewed you for your, your part of it. I have heard some of the other guys and some great, unbelievable information. Doug Hagman covers the southern border like he never before because he met with four guys that were down embedded in there getting information. He's seen satellites, and I know you know about this in Panama and some of, some of those other connections. That, um, so we, we cover that. We cover a lot about what's going on in the heavens. I'm wondering what it is that God is laying on your heart. Because when I say apocalyptic signs, I don't mean necessarily blood moons and solar eclipses, although we're going to cover those things. But there's a lot of signs of these end, end times. What what area do you feel like God's pointing for you to talk about? Well, I know there's a couple of areas, but there's an unseen area too. With, with all of what's happening, Pastor Paul, and there are a lot of experts out there that there are a lot of people who are into those subjects who have that covered. There's a whole nother area that will take effect almost immediately, which is what I'll likely deal with. Because just in case nobody has noticed, the earth is changing rapidly, right? I think that people underestimate what they're about to live uh, in. Right. Okay. Right now, if I say that word, if I say the word summer to everybody, it's a passive statement. Guaranteed. If somebody were to ever say summer, you know, later on this year is going to cause fear. How about that one? Okay. Because there are conditions summer. the average person can't imagine. They can blame it on everything they want. But we have conditions that we're about to experience. Summer. That uh, are, are just not, you know, for a lot of people, they're not going to be, um, they're not they're not survivable. In, in a lot of ways, they're just not survivable. So you're going to go, you're going to go down an area of, uh, 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 where it's not even really being talked about a lot. Is it, Am I right? Am I saying it? Yeah. It's almost like people are, people are, uh, the media, uh, Everybody, it's almost like they're just, they're turned away from this subject totally. Is it you know, fear? Everybody's going to have to endure it. Is it fear that's causing everyone to not want to look, uh, don't want to see? I know that for, if you take notice of meteorologist, they've been given a gag order and a set of instructions. Now, they cannot inflame any storm story. Have you noticed? They purposely avoid uh, certain types of words. They cannot use them or they're fired. And the reason why is because some of these storms are just not survivable. They're not. They're not. Last year, the hottest year we had on record. Yes. The oceans were the hottest temperatures. Yes. Anybody has ever seen. The expert scientists underestimated the temperature, both in the air, the ambient temperature, and the water, by about 10 degrees. That, that's a big miss. That's huge. They consistently have done this because they're bound. They have to receive a paycheck. Right. right? So yeah. they're, they're only going to say so much. And they don't want to look into areas that are going to cause a panic or anything like that. But I'll, I'll say one small thing. Get ready for rocks. To, get ready for it to rain rocks. And we're not talking about meteorites at all. Not meteorites. Get ready for it to rain rocks. We're past the point of no return. If you go back into the 80s, they kept telling us if the temperature, if the global temperatures raise to a certain degree, there's no turning back. We've already passed that mark, right? Do you, do you remember that rhetoric? They said, hey, if the earth heats up, you know, 1.2 degrees, yeah. we're all doomed. It's, it's past that mark. It's past, it's past that. the marks they set. Right? It's kind of like when they kept saying every year, Iran is 30 days from breakout. They said yeah. this every year. Didn't yeah, they? they did. They every did. Every year, they yeah. were 30 days from a breakout. Yeah. And, but people, for some reason, people did not challenge that. It, they, they believed it for some odd reason. They believed that. So the weather is the same way. So okay, right now, what people see right now, these storms that we're having right now, we're having an all uh season storm right now right tornadoes thunderstorms snow all these conditions are being felt right now in the usa imagine that about 
hundred times worse, right? Uh, destroy entire neighborhoods without a tornado, uprooting life in many different areas, not to mention the fires. The fires are going to be cruel, very cruel. Well, you called this uh, Texas fire. Three weeks before the fire broke out in the panel, you said, look out for Texas for some really bad fires. And all of a sudden, three weeks later, we have this engulfed, this inferno, the worst fire in the history of Texas, burning up thousands of cattle and hundreds of homes and structures and just destroying uh, good, real good uh, land. Um, and be was it because the conditions were right or is it, is it because there's, uh, is there like a st the perfect storm that's maybe, and maybe I'm getting into your, your, your presentation next week and I don't want to go. Will. I'll get into it because they're going to make up, they're going to make up something that will soothe other people, right? But something that bad, they want to hear that somebody started that. Nobody wants to hear that was natural because if you say it was natural, you can't defend against the next one. No, that's right. That's right. But you got to blame it on that, somebody, that right? Place in Texas, the places that were burned, it hardly had any fuel. There was hardly any fuel. It wasn't like it was a forested area or something like that, right? That's not what it was. So it's cow pastures. Can you imagine what would happen if it hit uh, in an area? Canada, get ready. Canada better get ready. I pray Canada is getting ready. You know, um, places like that, they have a lot of fuel. Well, they had, and but they last year. Be able to escape. Canada had the worst fires they've ever had in the history of their nation last year. You're saying it's coming back? It's coming back. Is coming back. Mike, so I, I just want to say that I I look forward to your presentation. I look forward to it because, you know, you you, you have a track record now of giving us a heads up, giving us a little bit of a, a head start so that when it comes to pass, we, we realize that um, things are progressing and it, it's just moving us that much closer to the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And, and it should help people to prepare for the things and and so this when I saw the gorilla hail today, when I seen the uh, incredible snow blizzards we've had the last month, when I see tornadoes and are just in volcanoes and everything else and and then the wars and rumors of wars, I just you can just you start anywhere you want to and you see the prophetic hand of God moving in every direction. Sure. People should get right with God. Would you agree? Absolutely, this stuff it, it is unusual. But I, I, I guess what else is unusual? Okay. It, it no matter what comes, if a person truly belongs to the Father through Christ, right? Yep. I know for a fact they're going to be a thousand percent delivered, because they said, "Well, of God, that God's people be delivered, every single one." Jesus said, "It is God's will that He not lose any of them." So all those who truly believe in Christ, who agree with this gospel, they're going to be kept. This is the that's moment. right, and they won't suffer because all God's people, all this time they've been suffering, some minor, some major, but they've been suffering. This is their moment where they won't suffer. They will see suffering, but they themselves will not suffer. And God has already set up provision for them. Think of all these people who seek to save their own lives, who have built bunkers and everything else, but they don't belong to the Most High. In the Bible, when it says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just, God does things in a, in a time when we need it, right? That's going to be the time when we need it. So these people who have nothing to prepare with, God will lead them right to a safe zone, a safe area, some place where there's already food. Somebody else has made provisions for God's people. I absolutely believe that. So my advice to everybody is keep sowing in your garden. Mercy grace all those good things so that when it's time to eat because you will eat from your garden you will have good food to eat whatever you sow you're going to have to reap so don't don't sow any you know rotten things sow the good things yep so that you can reap those good things because we're going to need it amen we're, we're going to need it amen amen mike well thank you so much for coming on tonight being with us i, I saw one comment scrolling by <coughs> said i thought planet x was the was the biggest problem the face that we're going to face? What happened to it? I think what Mike's trying to tell you is, the effects of it is That's is right. about to really happen. So, it didn't go away, folks. It didn't. No, go it's away. coming. That's why we're going through all this. Yeah. Right? These yep. are external problems. Yep. And it's not only Earth. 
you're, you're talking about Mars. You're talking about, you know, Uranus. All these other planets are changing, yeah. just like Earth. So it's affecting the entire solar system. And when it actually gets here, well, it's really going to be too late. Mike from around the world. Mike, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I, and uh, I, we're going to get with you uh, either Monday or Tuesday. That Heidi will send you an email when, when we're going to tape you. So let us know, and she'll send you an email, and you can we'll get it coordinated, okay? Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Mike, so That's much good. for being with us tonight, brother. Thank you so much. Pastor Paul, always an honor. God bless you. The honor's mine, and I thank all of us that are here. God bless.